the dropship doors groaned open with a hiss, revealing the dusty red plains of Galnora. Sergeant Marcus clutched his assault rifle as he waited for the order to disembark. Through his helmet's heads-up display, he surveyed the terrain. Flat, rocky ground stretched as far as the eye could see, punctuated by the occasional crystal grain field shimmering in the dawn light. In the distance, jagged cliffs and mesas rose up like the teeth of some ancient beast. Captain Vander signaled, and the platoon jumped down from the dropship one by one. Marcus landed with a thud, the gravity of Galnora heavier than Earth. All around him, Terran soldiers were disembarking from their transports and forming up into companies and battalions under the command of their officers. Artillery pieces and supply crates were being offloaded by automated lifters. To the west, plumes of dust and smoke marked the positions of the Terran Expeditionary Force engaging the Dominion forces. But here, all seemed quiet. Too quiet, as the saying went. According to reconnaissance, a large Dominion mechanized division was garrisoned in the valleys below the cliffs ahead. Their job was to draw those tanks and mechs out into the open. An hour passed as the brigade reorganized. Then, on Vander's orders, the 15th Highlanders advanced into the dusty unknown. Marcus fell into line between Private Adams and Chen, scanning the terrain warily as they marched. The unnatural stillness was unnerving. They had landed on this planet to win it back from the oppressive Dominion, but first they would have to take Vala. Suddenly Adams cried out and collapsed, a smoking hole in her forehead. Sniper. Marcus and Chen dragged her body into cover as accurate rifle fire began cracking overhead. They were taking casualties faster than they could react. The captain screamed orders, and two squads peeled off to flank the invisible enemy. Slowly, under covering fire, the rest of the platoon inched ahead. Marcus glimpsed movement on a ridgeline to their left, the snipers making a run for it. The flanking teams opened up with auto cannon and missiles, chewing rock and dust. When the barrage lifted, four wrecked figures lay amidst the debris. Pushing on, they spotted dust clouds stirring on the cliffs ahead. Tanks, Marcus hurried into a firing position and switched his optics to thermal. Sure enough, the clear shapes of Dominion armor material emerged through the thermals. Three o'clock, ten meters, heavy armor and infantry. Engaging. The initial magazine from his rifle sparked uselessly off reactive armor. Cursing, he radioed for a missile trooper. A few moments later, an ugly whoosh and a ball of fire consumed one of the tanks. Its burning hulk collapsed, blocking the path of its comrades. In the chaos, the Highlanders surged forward and overwhelmed the dismounted infantry in close combat. The action had barely taken an hour, but already a dozen Terran soldiers lay dead. And this was only the beginning. Through his scope, Marcus spied movement in the valley below platoons of tanks and mechs, shuffling into battle formations as dust kicked up in their wake. Their scouts had been the first punch, now the main Dominion force was throwing its gauntlet. He switched to the company frequency. Captain, you're going to want to see this. The big boys are coming out to play. The dusty wind howled across the flats as the massive Dominion armor material column crested the valley ridges and advanced. From their new vantage, Marcus and his fellow scouts counted over 50 tanks and two dozen hulking mechanized walkers, accompanied by troop transports and hover guns. It was a formidable attack force, perhaps numbering in the thousands when you included the infantry. Captain Vander swore under his breath. Looks like they aim to smash us in detail before we can dig in. Well, lads, we asked for their attention, and now we've got it. Third platoon, harass and delay. First and second on me, we're making for the high ground. As the main force disengaged under covering fire, Marcus and his scouts took up positions behind rocky outcrops. They had light anti-tank missiles and recoilless rifles not enough to destroy the whole Dominion armored division, but maybe enough to slow them down. On Vander's signal, they began pouring long-range fire into the oncoming machines of war. Missiles blew apart turrets and destroyed tracks while high-explosive shells turned enemy armor into flaming wreckage. 
but for every tank they stopped, two seemed to take its place. The skies grew dark with the smoke of burning vehicles and short-lived explosions. As the Dominion force closed to within a kilometer, they switched on interlocking fields of autocannon fire that chewed up the earth all around Marcus' position. He hugged the dirt tightly, waiting for a window to return fire between the maelstrom of slugs. Beside him, Chen screamed, clutching a mangled stump where his hand had been. A shadow fell across the battlefield. Marcus looked up in horror to see two towering Dominion mechs silhouetted against the bloody sky. Their cannons blazed, raking the scouts' locations with enough firepower to level a city block. Chucking smoke and sensor grenades, Marcus dragged the wounded Chen back, while what was left of 3rd Platoon fell back fighting. They abandoned their useless guns and missiles, praying the main force had achieved their objectives ahead of schedule. Dust choked the air as Marcus stumbled into an aid station, handing Chen off to the medics. He checked his ammunition. Barely a dozen shells left against an enemy that just kept coming. Somewhere out there in the wastelands of Galnora, Vander and the Terran army were all that stood between total annihilation and ultimate victory. The outcome of Operation Eclipse and the fate of the planet would be decided in the grim battles still to come. Pulling himself wearily to a vantage point, Marcus scanned the ridgeline with his optic feeds. Through the swirling haze he spotted movement, Terran armor material, dug in amongst the crags and winding up the slopes. Word came down that the main force had seized Peak 112 under heavy fire, pinning the remaining Dominion tanks in the valley flats. Now it was a battle of artillery and air power, as fighter bombers swooped low to strafe enemy troop columns. In the fading light, dim shadows moved on the ridges. Mechs, stealthy tiger variants burdened with extra armor. Marcus alerted the command, knowing they'd try to flank the Terran positions under cover of night. Sure enough, as dusk fell, the tanks charged down from the heights. Grenades and missiles lit up the dark like a fireworks display, illuminating the hulking silhouettes of the enemy war machines. It seemed the battle had reached a stalemate until a flash lit the eastern sky, accompanied by a boom like distant thunder. One by one, balls of plasma fire blossomed over the valley, consuming everything beneath in their white-hot embraces. Terran artillery had zeroed in on the Dominion formations, breaking their cohesion with precision over plasma destruction. In the aftermath, only ghosts remained amongst the sea of static. Picking their way through the ruins at dawn, Marcus found only twisted metal skeletons where tanks had once rumbled. Body parts were scattered like discarded doll pieces. Somehow he had survived, while so many others had been obliterated. As the rescue teams moved in, the landscape was barely recognizable. A beautiful wasteland, scorched clean by atomic hellfire. Later, reports would call it a hollow victory, citing the massive casualties on both sides. But for Marcus and the few remaining soldiers of the 15th Highlanders, it was a battle well and truly won. Vala was secured, the planet was wrested from Dominion control. Though the cost had been dear, their sacrifice had paved the way for Terran forces to liberate more worlds from tyranny. Marcus sat alone on the blasted plain, watching the twin suns set over Galnora for the last time. He lit a cigarette stolen from a fallen comrade and breathed in the acrid smoke. Tomorrow there would be new dropships to board, new planets to fight for. But for now he was content to sit in silence amid the quiet ruins, remembering all who had given their lives in the name of freedom. This, then, would be the end of the forgotten battle, a costly struggle that few would recall, but one whose impact would reverberate down the ages.